Hey guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. And on this topic, I wanted to talk about how the narcissist needs to know what you're thinking in order for the narcissist to come into your home and to come into your life. They need to come into your mind. So on the last video I made, I talked about how the narcissist basically thinks that you are unintelligent. You know, um, you can know about bad people, but how could you, how could you ever, how can you ever tell if someone is bad? You can assume someone is bad because they don't want to talk to you. They don't want to be your friend. You can assume that person is bad, but they're just, you know, everyone has free will. It doesn't make that person bad um, until that person disrespects you, right? For no reason. If that person just doesn't greet you or doesn't want nothing to do with you, they could have a bad, you know, um, they, they could have a bad, like bad energy about them, but, you know, their energy doesn't really have to affect you. What the narcissist will do is that you won't think that they're taking energy from you. You won't think that because in the narcissist's mind, you're unintelligent enough not to question their motives. So this is why a lot of times the narcissist wants to know everything about you right away. And it's pretty scary, especially, you know, um, when I think back, like, you know, in my younger days, when you would talk on, on the phone, you know, on the house phone, when people used house phones, right? And you would be, you know, talking to someone, getting to know them, and you would just be on the phone for hours, you know, just giving people information about your personal life, connecting to people through traumas, you know. So the narcissist finds that as weakness right away when people connect to one another through traumas because they feel like regardless of what your past is, um, you should be looking in front of you instead of looking in the past. You're so busy trying to connect to people um, using scenarios and things that you've been through that you don't realize what's in front of you. You know, this is why, you know, a lot of times things will happen to you and it'll be the people closest to you because you're sharing information with the people closest to you, at least thinking you can trust them because they're, they're, you know, you're exchanging information. Little do you know that they're not oversharing with you or they're not really telling you the truth or they're making up stories um, just to get more information or um, they're gossiping about others so that you can talk about yourself and you will leave that conversation feeling empty because you'll realize that you gave out energy and all that person did was talk about someone else, you know? So narcissists find different tactics to manipulate people and they feel like a lot of people are very unintelligent because how will you know if someone is a predator if you don't study that predator, if you don't study the things that they say, the words that they say, if you don't believe them when they tell you who they are, you know, so to the narcissist, that's perfect supply. Um, at the same time, you know, the narcissist will also be attracted to people where they almost feel like they have an idea of who you are or who your family is and they almost start to antagonize you because they know if they can control your mood if they can control your emotions they know where they stand with you as far as you know continue continuing the control you know um your obedience to them you know um which doesn't mean anything to them it's almost you know amusing to them it's being it's power is being able to make someone go out of their way to do things for you or to be there for you or to serve you as a companion as company just so that you know you can have fuel 
you know, almost like they're, they're using you as a muse to move on to the next. And a lot of times they'll, you know, get really excited when they meet someone new because of the unknown. They're all about containing information from others. So they'll tell you who you are. And a lot of, a, a lot of us, right? We go against the narcissist. We argue with the narcissist. It's almost like they're battling with us. And we're like, why is this person battling with us? But this is a predator. They're trying to wear you down. They're trying to get as much fuel from you, as much information from you. They're not gaining information from you because they want to give you whatever it is that you desire. They're gaining information from you to make you feel powerless because when you feel like you've been an open book to someone, you feel like you've built a connection to someone because they've they've read the words to your book. Your book isn't even out yet, right? And now they're just... They're giving away your music. They're giving away your, your, your information, your book. And, you know, they're using it as a tool. And it loses its value because now they've, they've given up information about your story. And now people feel like they know you. They know your book. They know your story. What's the point on buying it? So now, because people feel like they know you, they feel like there there is nothing to gain from you. There's nothing to, that's going to be of value to them. This is why when you start doing better in life, or when you start receiving other blessings, the narcissist will come back because they feel like they need to gather more information or they need to be a part of your success they almost feel like you owe it to them because to them it's like <clears throat> even though they're using you for their own gain they also in a way feel like they're giving you some type of protection because they're like if i'm able to fool you you can run across someone more dangerous than me and they can do worse to you so they almost feel like they're saving your life in a way, even if they're destroying it, because they almost feel like, well, you know, come into the real world, come into my world. This is what I see. I see things that you don't see. And it's almost like they want to force you to see those things. They want to they want to force you to see the evil around around you that. You were ignoring. Sometimes they can even talk to you about the people in your life or they can say certain things and you wonder, like, how does this person know? Or they'll gather certain information that you've told them and they'll, they'll make their own narrative. And you'll feel like they must be right. How do they know these things? You know, they're telling me so much about myself, but all you did was give up enough information where they can put things together according to um, the many people they've spoken to about different situations. They're not oblivious to the abuse that they cause or the, bu the abuse that other narcissists cause. And they're not oblivious to how they make you feel. They just don't care. You know, they feel like there's something wrong with you. Like you have to evolve in some type of way mentally or you're just not going to make it they feel like no matter even if even if you're in a better situation than them they feel like you don't even deserve it they feel like um they can have whatever you have because they were able to get access to you even if you felt like you had more value than them they feel like if i was able to get access to you then i am on your level so they live by curiously through other people and when they feel like they've gained all the information they need to know, see, they want to know everything right away. And as time goes, they start to learn more. You know, um, 
they learn different tactics on how to manipulate even while being with you. They're perfecting their craft. And that's why to some people, they feel like the behavior was undetected for a long time. And they and that was part of them retraining themselves to go undetected. That was them seeing what were the things that were that, that they were doing wrong, you know, because there are certain narcissists that repeat the same patterns, but then there are certain narcissists who are extreme uh, predators because they see the patterns that keep getting them stuck in a loop. And they see those patterns on narcissists who are less intelligent than them. And they look at them and they see things that they used to do and they see and they put two and two together on how you know they get you know they get caught caught up for the things that they do right um so a lot of narcissists they feed off of people because of their lack of awareness about people most people f see people and they just automatically feel comfortable like i said it's like you know, you would rather go and meet a narcissist in the middle of a crowd because it's going to make you feel like other people are there, right? <clears throat> so the narcissist, a lot of times, you know, will target certain people if they can't read you right away. If you're someone who's alone a lot, they'll target you because they'll feel like if you're alone, you must be lonely, and then they'll start off asking you small questions and they feel like if you entertain them in any kind of way, even if you're kind of like, oh, this dude is, is coming around me, talking to me because I'm by myself, you know, um, and you might feel like I'm bored anyway. I'm going to entertain this person for a little bit, even if I know they're full of crap. So to them, it's like, if you if if you had a certain level of intelligence you would ignore me you would look at me like an animal coming up to you and you would ignore me you know if i asked you oh what's your name you would uh, you would say why does it matter you know because i'm in a public place and i'm isolated by myself and there's a reason for that and it doesn't mean because i'm alone doesn't mean i'm sad but narcissists will assume that so they'll approach you and if you entertain them in any kind of way if you're laughing even if you're looking at them with disgust or looking at them like like oh this guy is a prick he's an asshole or he thinks he's all that you know to them they are all that because you're entertaining them and to them even if you're going against whatever they're they're saying and you're seeing through them you're seeing the narcissism in them right to them, it almost becomes humorous. It's like, oh, you can see that I'm a narcissist. You can see that I like playing mind games. Oh, you know, they're they're giving you the little smirk. You know, and if they see you have a little smirk, or they see you, they they see you smile at them, or you laugh at them like this guy, he thinks he's all that. That smile is enough for that predator to get supply. Because to them, it's like, oh, you don't know how serious this is. You secretly like my charm or you would think that I'm gross. You would think I'm a weirdo or you wouldn't even give me the time of day. You know, because you're letting me know into your bring. They they feel like you're allowing them into your thoughts because now you're saying, oh, you know, you're a narcissist. I can see right through you. To them, it's like, oh, this person can see that I'm a narcissist. So now they want to know why can you see that they're a narcissist? They're like, why do you say that? Oh, because I have confidence. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. A lot of people go through stuff and, you know, they have to have confidence. They have to be slightly delusional to be in this world, you know, so they hit you up with information that sounds intelligent. But you're dealing with a monster. This person's like 
just the simple fact we're having a conversation, even if it's a intelligent conversation, the narcissist still finds you to be unintelligent just because you're even giving them, like I said, the time of day. You're allowing them into your thoughts of them. Just you simply, the narcissist doesn't care if you call them a narcissist. That doesn't mean anything to them. Those are just words. The narcissist, the only thing the narcissist cares about are actions because they know that themselves, they know that they are very animalistic. So to them, it's like, oh, you don't get it. I can look at you a certain way and get information. I can get information off of you by looking at you, by making eye contact with you, by staring at you and seeing how long you can keep the eye contact, by seeing if I can intimidate you, by, by making you laugh, by um, bringing religion or God into the conversation. There's so many different tactics that they use to try to tap into your frequency. And what we don't realize that, you know, when we get, you know, attacked by narcissists in our lives, we don't realize the reason they're even attacking us. Even with family, they know your business. They know your every move. And that's all narcissists like. They like to fight. They like to pick. They're like animals. Like they, they like to fight for no reason. They like to, they like to fight to to defend territory or who's the strongest, who's the smartest. So just being around them, they're going to be competitive in some type of way or form. And that's not just with you. That's with anybody. They're going to act like they're the smartest. They're going to act like they're the godliest. They've been through more shit than you, you know? So... What I realized with a lot of narcissists, you know, after I went through what I went through and all the information I, I've gathered through observation is that a lot of narcissists will approach me just the simple fact because they can't read me. They cannot read me because I don't give out too much information because when they ask me questions, I ask them questions because I know it's a game. So it's like, okay, you ask me questions, I'm going to ask you questions. And right there, they already know this person's not letting me in the door. This person's not allowing me in their mind. I want to know why. I want to know what you went through. I want to know your story. So now they'll say things, you must have you must have been through a bad breakup. No, not at all. What happened between you and your ex? Oh, he, he must have been a narcissist like me. No, not at all. Matter of fact, I'm gay. I don't even like men. It just throw you all the way off because you are you want to gather information about me. And not just that, but while you're gathering information, it's taking energy out of me and it's building a connection between you and I. Meaning that, you know, the more you connect to someone um, in any type of way, even through conversation, it's a possibility that you can bump into that person. You've made a connection to them that you've tapped into that person's frequency. It's like certain animals who call out to other animals with frequencies from a distance. That intelligence so the narcissist wants to connect to people so that they can call out to people so that they can build a network of connections, you know, like a web, the web of lies, so that they can come back around so that you can bump into them years later. Oh, that's that person I ate built, a, had a good conversation with, and you think you know them because of that. And you feel like your first impression of impression of them was a good one not knowing this person is a predator meaning that he knows exactly where you're at he knows he knows you are going to spin around spin the block one day one way or another that's why they don't trust certain people to have friendships even with the opposite sex because they feel like okay one day that person you know, is going to use you to spin around and and 
make you feel comfortable when things don't go their way. You're going to be the you're going to be the per, you're going to be the next person on that person's little black book. So what I notice with a lot of of you know narcissists and just relationships that I have work related, business related and stuff is that because certain people can't read me, they can't disrespect me. Narcissists disrespect people they can read right away. Because, see, when we meet the narcissist, we are out of our mind. We are out of our mind to be telling our personal business to people, just opening up our book. The empath almost walks around, feel you almost feel like, oh, everyone knows, I, everyone can feel my my empathy. People could know I'm a good person. People can see that I'm a good person. And, you know, when I talk, they can tell by the way I talk or they can tell by the stories I share. You almost feel like they can see through you. So because you feel like they can see through you, you just start saying stuff because you feel like I'm an open book. I'm, people can see through me anyway. But that's not the truth. They can't. Can't nobody tell who you are, what you feel, what you think. The narcissist knows that. That's why they make sure whatever mask they wear with certain people, they make sure that that's the impression that you get. See, a lot of narcissists I've ran across, they always put their best first impression with me. And their best first impression with me, I always think to myself, you might be full of shit. That's my first thought. To the narcissist, they feel like that's how you should think. Is that no matter if someone is being polite or they have etiquette or mannerism, you still shouldn't trust them. But a lot of people feel like certain people are kind or nice. And then they feel like, oh, I should just trust them. Because they're talking to me because they're being nice. Someone can, you know... Someone can be nice to you and make small conversation with you. And while they're making that small conversation with you, they could be stealing right in front of you. You know, so. When a narcissist is nice to you, but they know that their niceness is not enough for you. That you're indifferent to that. They want to know more. They'll respect you because they, they want to know more. The more they gather, the more they're going to start telling you who you are. Oh, you're this type of person, aren't you? Oh, you're that person. They'll start telling you their problems and these are fake problems just to see the way you would react. Or they'll ask for your advice about stuff just to see what kind of advice you would give them. They want to know what's in your mind and they'll use any tactic to get information out of you. They'll even study the way you interact with others to get information out of you. They'll ask you direct questions. They'll follow you closely. They'll want to be your friend, these frenemies. They'll want to be your partner because they want to know why you have what you have. You know, they're like, why? Why do you have this? Why do you have that? What is it about you? Because I feel like I'm smarter than you. You were too nice to even trust me. So how the hell do you have these things? How come no, how come no one else has conned you? And it's almost like they're trying to make it, you know, they're trying to make the choice right there and then that they're going to be the ones to, to do a number on you. Um, so narcissists don't know what you're thinking and they really can't disrespect you or come in. And even if they disrespect you, if you don't react to them and you treat them like they're not shit, they're going to feel that that's going to hurt them more than arguing with them. Because once you argue with them, they're thinking, oh, you're an emotional person. You know, people can hurt your feelings because you're reacting out of emotion. Even if you're reacting out of anger to them, it's like they get a sense of satisfaction. And I know it because you can train yourself, right, to tell yourself, I'm not going to react to people's bullshit. And because certain narcissists, they already they already know I can't this person. They're indifferent. They don't care. They don't care to want to know me. They're not excited about getting to know me. 
It doesn't matter how much information I share with them to try to relate to them. They just don't open the door to me. I can't read their mind. I've had a lot of different narcissists who in my mind, I'm thinking they're narcissists. They'll start oversharing with me because they're just hoping I'll I'll share with them and the weeks go by. They're, I see them. They're trying to pick at my brain. They're going from one subject to the next. They're, they're picking at my brain to see how much I know. And then finally they go, you know, you're very hard to read. Because they're thinking, hey, I've you've been seeing me for weeks and months now. As soon as you see me, you should be smiling and happy to see me because I'm so special and I'm the center of attention. And uh, look at me. I look good. I look this. A lot of women want me. A lot of men want me. So they want you to be excited to see them. They want they're playing the nice role so that your attention can be drawn to them. And you can see them as more than what they are, you know, because that makes them feel like you're losing value and you're they're They're in a competition, whether you like to believe it or not. Even when it comes to greeting and facial expression, they're, everything is a competition. That's why they're always giving you funny looks, side eye. You know, squinty eyes, raising the eyebrow, the stare game. They're always playing games constantly. The narcissist does not stop. You know, so I've had narcissists tell me, like, I can't read you. But they, they, they'll they say that, but they've gathered enough information to where they know I'm not like them. You know, but they're wondering, you know, they're and then and then they'll just make their own assumption. Oh, you're just a boring person. I'll get bored with you, you know, and they'll leave you alone. They don't want nothing to do with you because they'll consider you boring. They like to mess with people that they feel are less intelligent and they like to get people's emotions hind up because it's all fun and games. It's all about control. So they'll see I can't control this person. So sometimes they'll just be honest with you about who they are, what they are. They'll even start sharing things about their life that they're doing. Or they um, or they will stop sharing certain things because they're like, you already know I'm a narcissist. And if I keep exposing myself the more you're going to believe I'm a nar the more you're going to verify that I'm a narcissist so I'm they almost want to throw you off now like oh, I'm gonna just stop uh, I, I I'm gonna act truthful but certain things I'm just gonna leave out because this person already might have an idea that I'm a narcissist or you might have even told them what they are and they're like how did you know you know um because they because they they want to know how you know so now they'll keep trying to study you, you know, they'll, they'll want to know if you believe in God because they're atheists, you know, or some of them are devil worshipers and they'll act like, oh, I don't believe in God or the devil, but they're lying. They just want them. They want you not to have a belief in neither. They're like, if I can make you believe that I'm an atheist and you you could feel the same way as me and I believe in and in, in just believe in the sciences of this world then I'm gonna win because you won't be with God and you won't be with the devil and you'll just be lost while I'm outsmarting you you know while I'm selling you out you'll be doing things that go against your nature you know um, narcissists cannot read your mind until you give up information. So you can't get played by a narcissist unless you're giving yourself up. And once you give yourself, you could say, oh, it's not going to affect me. They're not going to get nothing out of it. If I share certain information, they're not going to get nothing. Nothing's going to happen. You can say that, but you don't know how these people think. And you don't know that some of them run in packs and some of them will send other people to catfish you. It's like, it's war with them, you know? So they don't know what you're thinking. 
they're they're studying what you have your physical things your physical body they're they're studying all of that but for them to verify who they believe you are they have to ask you questions they have to interrogate you they have to interview you you know and they don't care how long that interview takes as long as they they can know or validate themselves you know and to them it's all about knowing you just to get access to you it's all about you know it should be stranger danger you know but it's all about putting your guard down and building a connection with you any type of connection even if it's just passing on by even if it's just meeting you for a brief second you can meet someone online for a brief second and then see them in person and then feel like you know them you know you get me and feel like you know them and you trust them because you've been watching their posts, you've been watching them online, you've been watching their lives, and then you see them in person and you can feel like you have an instant connection because you guys have been liking each other's stuff. But that does not mean you know them. And then you'll start sharing stuff with this person because you feel like you know them. So the narcissist finds stuff like that unintelligent. That's why... The internet is their playground. If they can get you to meet them, they already feel like that was an, an intelligent move. And some certain people will tell you not everyone's like that. But if there's a lot of narcissists in this world and they're all using the same tools, and, and especially because it's easier, they don't even have to go out. They just get on the phone. Um, it's something to be aware of. And a lot of these, like I said, some of them run in packs and groups and they know each other and you know, one of them is sending you a message, another one sending you a message. You don't know these people all know each other. They got special groups where they, they're, you know, you send them any type of pictures. They're, they're uploading your picture to the chat. You know, um, they can't get information from you unless you give it, unless you put that information out, unless you put those pictures out, unless you expose yourself, they can use anything you put out there to flip it on you or to or to gain something from you you know you're putting pictures out there of yourself someone a narcissist can grab your pictures to gain access to certain supplies that they might not be able to get in real person just by using your pictures so to the narcissist information is power and most people don't use the information that they're aware of and certain people don't search or so certain people just live in their own bubble where they don't even care to know anything because they feel like the way they're living is working for them they're like there's no point to them there's no point on accessing any more information it's like they don't care you know they're stuck in their ways so I realized during my time of healing, because I spent a lot of time by myself and my thoughts in my head, and then when I started getting around certain people, when I started to date again, I told you guys that my inner voice told me to ask my friend if she knew the dude that I had been dating, and I don't know why my intuition told me that, why I would even ask my friend that when she doesn't know him, he doesn't know her, at least that's what I thought, but when my intuition told me my mind told me to ask her and she verified that it was. I knew that taking time away from everyone, clearing my mind and being in my own thoughts was very powerful. That's when I started watching my words. That's when I became silent. And when I became, because when you're the loudest in the room, everyone feels like they know you. They might act like they're comfortable with you, but they're going to talk behind your back. At least if you're silent, they're still going to talk behind your back, but they won't say shit to you in person. You know what I'm saying? So I noticed people wouldn't say certain things to me in person, which is respect. You could talk behind my back, but, you know, in front of me, you're not going to say nothing. So that's respect either way. Even if you're a shitty person, you're still respecting me enough not to disrespect me to my face. Cool. You know, put the fake mask on, be nice, cool. 
because you don't have access to me. You already know you don't. That's why you're talking behind my back because you don't have access to me. And because you don't have access to me and most people give you access right away. There's something about me that you want. You don't really want to be my friend. You really don't want to get close to me. It's that you want access to me. So access is fuel. Your mind, who you are, is fuel. These are weapons that will be used against you. The more you talk, the more you tell, the more you expose, the more these people feel like they know you, the more they feel like they could put you in a category and leave you there. And that's going to be their first impression. Their first impression isn't just the first day they met you. It's their, the first impression is how they see you within a period of time. Are you consistent or are you just pretending you're, you, they, they're going to study you for a while, you know? So if you come in trying to act nice and you're drama free, you could say that. But after a couple weeks and months, they're going to be like, yeah, you said that you're drama free, but you're gossiping right along with everyone else. So that person that doesn't gossip, who keeps it strictly business, who might interact with others, but not expose too much, might outwork you in your position. And now you don't know why someone outworked you in your position. And that's because... They had respect, but they were never on anyone's team. They were holding on to their weapons, anything that was able to be used against them for that position. So a lot of empaths are like kind of out of their minds because they feel like in order to connect to people, you have to share things or you have to make a joke or you have to say something. You're like, oh, I got to say something. I remember telling my little cousin, I was like, he's like, oh, kids bully me. And they say this and that about me. And I'm like, sometimes the reason they're bullying you is because you don't know how to be quiet. You and your friends are in the car. Everyone's doing their own thing or on the phone or on their phones. And you're the only one just talking about different stuff going from one subject to the other to the next to the next speaking about spirituality speaking about something else you just giving up all your cards and then you're wondering why your friends finally are like shut the hell up or man we don't want to hear that or oh here he here he goes philosopher you know and then the narcissist is kind of like, oh, uh, I tried to be quiet. But then I'm not getting attention when I'm quiet. I don't like that. I, I need to be the center of attention. Or they'll act like, okay, I won't, I won't, I won't speak anymore. I'll be quiet because you guys, you guys feel like I'm unintelligent because I talk too much. So, so I'm going to do the opposite now. But now when the narcissist does the opposite, People aren't used to that. They're used to the narcissist talking, asking questions, interrogating, always want to know everything, gossiping. They're used to that. So when the narcissist is quiet, it's weird to them. And they're like, we want you to talk again. We want you to entertain us again. So the narcissist almost feels like they're an entertainer. So they feel like, oh, if I'm going to be an entertainer, they they walk into every situation trying to put on a show. And in order for them to put the show, they got to know what you're into, what you like, so they can perform. When they don't know what you like, what you're into, but they know you have a higher sense of intelligence, you have a lot of information just like them. They need to read your mind. It makes them uncomfortable because they can't devalue you or they can't get others to devalue you because everyone knows your character and it would just make them look like a hater. And that's what happens a lot of times. A narcissist will look like a hater and people will see it. 
you know. But if you go into situations not thinking, the narcissist will make you look unintelligent and will make others turn against you. So that's why you should always, you know, protect your mind, protect your thoughts. And you don't have to prove nothing to nobody. Narcissist wants to, they want you to try to prove yourself because just the simple fact that you're even trying to defend yourself or prove yourself or tell people how empathetic you are and all that, to them it's like, that's weak. You're showing me that you're a weak person, that you're emotional, that you'll, you'll be so caught up in your emotions that you'll have a whole thief behind you take off with all your shit because you're so busy focused on the wrong thing. So this is why narcissists don't respect people who are emotionally invested into their past or into even other people. They feel like you being upset about people who don't care about you is stupid. And then they're like, why you're so busy that thinking about them I'm standing here in front of you listening to you, but I don't give a damn either, you know? So this is why they'll go after the Jezebel. They'll go after other people because those people have a sense of, you know, they never know where they stand with them, whether even if it's toxic and they fight a lot, it's a toxic relationship. They feel like they never, they never know where they stand with certain narcissists or Jezebels. That's why the narcissist will always treat people who don't treat them good better. You know, because they feel like at least this person gave me access to them, even though they're not giving me full access because they have they have boundaries. See, you told me you have boundaries, but I kept poking at you telling you who you are and you eventually bowed down and you accepted what I made you to be. You accepted the, the disrespect. You accepted everything. And now my perception of you has changed. So it went from me wanting to study you, know everything about you. You told me everything about you right away. Um, in time, you kept evolving. You know, you kept learning lessons from all the discard. And I kept wanting to see the new version of you. But as soon as I saw something wrong or as soon as I saw that you made an intelligent move, I was turned off by it again. And, I, and it just kept reminding me why I cannot keep you as a primary source. Or it just kept reminding me of why I don't stay anywhere forever, you know. And... You know, to them, it's like, I don't want to be responsible over, or, or, you know, I don't want to be responsible over anyone, you know, um, and, and, and they feel like a lot of the things that happen in your life, a lot of times it comes from misdirected anger. You'll make bad choices because the narcissist knows they're a negative influence in your life, um, so once they know that you start catching on to the negative influence and how they've ruined certain situations while you were sh sharing personal things with them, now they'll want to disappear because now you know that they were no different from the people that have hurt you. If anything, they were worse because they were close to you. You know, um, they were the closest to you. You you shared everything you you feel like that person knew everything about your life. And in the end, you leave feeling like, damn, I didn't even know. I, I didn't even know him. I didn't even know her. Or he even told me or he looked at me and said, you don't really know me the way you think you do. You, you're looking at the physical form, you know. So a lot of us are out of our mind where we're. we're we're thinking people can see through us, but they can't see through us. We're the ones telling on ourselves, exposing ourselves, and you, basically giving ourselves up to be sacrificed. And then we learn from the pain. And some people still don't learn from the pain. They feel like, you know, they feel like 
it's not a big deal. They get used to the abuse. They they get desensitized. And the narcissist takes advantage of people that are desensitized too because they feel like eventually you're going to try to take a look at yourself and everything's going to come crashing down on you because you held on, you know, you, you pushed your feelings to the side for so long. They feel like, you know, they're creating a, a monster in a way. Um, so these people don't, nobody knows what you're thinking. Or sometimes you want to study people and think to yourself, so how can this person treat me wrong? Don't they think about what they did? Don't they think about how they did this and how it affected me like this? Or they have kids too. They have children my age. They have, you know, you'll think about almost everything. Or how would they like it if someone treated their children like that? How would they like it if someone separated them from their parents? Or how would they like it? You'll just make scenarios of why people are the way they are, you know, um, you're trying to figure out what's going on in their mind to make the 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 choices that they make because you feel like they're unethical or they go against everything that you believe in, you know? Um, so the narcissist just views it as, you know, those people can't, those people, they don't know, they don't, they, they don't, they don't know what you're thinking. You know, you don't know what they're thinking. The difference is that the narcissists that do stuff to you, they don't give you no answers. You don't know what they're thinking, why they did what they did. They act like they don't give a damn. They'll even cuss you out because you're pissing them off trying to figure them out. Of you trying to figure, You're trying to question them why they did what they did. And to them, it doesn't matter why they did what they did because you should know they did it for themselves. They're like, I did it for myself. I don't got to explain to you why I stole the money and what I spent the money on. Just know I stole it from you. Don't tell me what I'm going to spend the money on. Just know I stole it from you. That's how they look at it, you know? Um, they feel like you should have never left your money on the counter and you don't really know me like that, you know? Um, so they don't know what you're thinking unless you're inviting them into your life, into your world. And that's what I learned. Like I said, when I was going through that depression after everything I went through is that I was in my mind a lot. And then when I got around people in society again, I was still in my mind a lot, but now I was able to see things that I didn't see before. You know, I was the type of person that men were flirting with me. I didn't even know if they were flirting with me because I was so wrapped around the narcissist's finger, you know? So when you leave, now you're paying attention to things. You're paying attention to the eye contact. You're paying attention to how these predators will spot you They'll study you and then they'll come close to you. And next thing you know, they're boom right there. They're like a ghost. They're popping up, right? But you you already know their next move. You already know they're going to come up to you. They're going to try to spook you. They're going to pull up on you like a ghost. But you already know. So when by the time you turn around, you already know they're there. You're not jumping. And they're wondering why you're not jumping. Because they made their own assumptions of what they think you are and then they'll feel like oh someone must have fed off of you someone must have took some of your energy now they want to know the backstory now they want to know why you're not telling them the backstory now they want to know if that backstory they created was true now they want to throw hints and jokes at you now they see the hints and jokes don't work now they see that you're ignoring them now they want to disrespect you because you're ignoring them. Now they see that the disrespect don't mean nothing. Now they feel stupid. Now you're you you're you're treating them like whatever. I don't care. Now they feel beneath you, but they they want to show you that they're not affected by you. So they're constantly playing mind games because they're trying to read you. Oh, they're I'm gonna act like I'm not affected by you. And you're still like, I don't give a damn. I'm just not opening the door for you. That's it. You can't figure me out. It is what it is. Oh, I bet no one likes you because you have a, you have a wall up. 
No, I just have a wall up for you, fool. You know, now they feel dumb. They're like, they must have this great life. They must be around great people. And they feel like I'm beneath them. They could see through me. They could see that I'm garbage. I'm not going to let them affect me, but they're thinking about you. So it does affect them. They'll act like, you know, they act like, oh, I don't have any empathy. I don't have feelings, but they do get triggered when they don't get the control. They're weirdos, you know, um, and some of them, you know, they they'll just they won't spend no time on you you know they'll just they'll feel like okay you didn't fall for it there are plenty of birds out here that will fall for it so the narcissist feels like people are an, are unintelligent you know because they they feel like most people just read out the book the information they give out free information like I be giving free information on YouTube. That's weakness to the narcissist. They're like, that's weak. But you know what? I'm going to tell you what the fuck I did to people and how I did it. That ain't weak because I'm the one who did it. I was the one who fucked them over. See, if they listen to empaths talk, they feel like that shit is weak. But then when they hear themselves talk, it makes them feel good and it gives them validation because they feel like they got away. You know, so I'm sending you guys lots of love, light, peace in your healing. If you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. If you guys want to keep supporting my channel, you can book a session with me. My booking information will be on the description. And I'm sending you guys lots of love, light, peace. Talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.